You can never be too rich, too thin, or have enough memory. And that's especially true when it comes to Photoshop. In this session, I want to talk to you about best practices and the settings that you can set up in the preferences to make sure Photoshop is working the best it can and rocking right alongside you. Let's go take a look. Inside Photoshop, in the Photoshop menu, Preferences, Performance. On Windows, this is in the Edit menu. And when I choose Performance, we get a list of areas in here to work with. First of all, in the upper left-hand area, it shows me how much RAM I have in my machine. And by default, Photoshop wants to use 70% um, of your RAM. If you're using more than one application, you want to leave this at 70%. If, on the other hand, you happen to have just Photoshop running and you're not planning on running any other big applications, crank this red to 90% and use even more memory. But you've got to remember, you know, it's really easy for people that when they're working on their computer, they forget they have email running, they've got music programs, they have a few other things in the background. If you just want Photoshop to use as much as possible, turn that up to 90%, but you've got to remember that you're not running any other applications. I'm going to leave mine back where it was at 70% because I'll be running Illustrator and InDesign and Acrobat. On the right-hand side, there's a few settings in here for optimizing the cache. This is how Photoshop is saving out the information. Tall and thin. What the heck does this mean? Tall simply means um, a lot of layers, but a very small uh, pixel size. So these are typically smaller sizes, maybe you know, 1,000 or less pixels in, in one of the uh, measurements, but a lot of layers. And when you have that setting set, it will set a certain cache level and the tile size. The tile size, 128K, that's the size of the little pieces that get written out by Photoshop. Photoshop is constantly writing information to your disk. When you pause for a moment, it's writing more information. It's doing the best it can to try to keep this cache information uh, saved. If you choose big and flat, this means big files, large file dimensions, but uh, not a lot of layers. And you'll notice this stayed at 128K. That's because I'm on a laptop with two cores. If I happen to have more cores, then this will probably pop up to 1024K. So it's saving large files out. There really is no rule against you going in and changing these settings yourself. You can go beyond the defaults of these buttons. They're just our best guess on performance. The bottom line is, if you're getting a lot of progress bars, then you've probably got the wrong setting. So I'm going to leave mine back at the default setting. History states is, again, by default, is set to 20. The history is remembering everything you've done the last 20 times, and that will take up a lot of disk space. You can turn that up if you want, but you're really going to pay a price uh, for, for that. And I mean, how many people remember the last 99 things they did in Photoshop anyway? 20 is a good default, but again, you can turn that up. On the left-hand side, we've got our scratch drives. And this is a long time Photoshop staple that you really have to understand. If you have your operating system and Photoshop and all of your images on the same drive, you're probably suffering a lot of performance. Uh, and that's because there's a little head that moves around inside there. And when that head is moving around, it's jumping between the operating system and between what Photoshop is doing and the images. The only place this makes sense, if you have a solid state drive. Solid state drives are random access memory. They're just like RAM memory. They can be uh, grabbing information from any part of that disk. So it's all right if you have an SSD to have your operating system and Photoshop and even your often opened images on that disk. The reason you have a scratch disk is if you're running out of RAM and it's writing to the disk. Disks are relatively inexpensive these days and you can connect through high speed like eSATA, SATA, or Firewire 800. And if you have an external drive, then you're able to write that information out as quickly as possible. You will also benefit if that is an SSD drive. It's important to note that some manufacturers actually place two drives in one enclosure and make it a RAID 0 drive for you automatically. You need to understand that if you're putting two drives together yourself, that you need the proper RAID hardware 
to make this work. Like I said, a lot of manufacturers are actually making these drives now. Just check for RAID 0. On the right hand side, we've got our GPU settings and this is if you happen to have a specific card where this is supported. Um, when you enable this, it doesn't mean it's going to make every part of Photoshop faster. It's going to make some parts, usually things like painting and drawing, trying to keep up with the brush. If you have a, a really high-end card, you're going to keep up a lot easier. And the OpenGL part of things here means that in Photoshop CS5 Extended, it means all the 3D capabilities inside Photoshop will be wicked fast. If you're doing 3D inside Photoshop CS5 Extended, you really deserve to have a very, very powerful card with an OpenGL engine. If you click on Advanced Settings, there are three settings inside here, Basic, Normal, and Advanced. Basic, you can turn this on if you really have a, a card that's not keeping up to things. Um, if you really want to push this though, you can go to advanced. Um, and this is for things that are really GPU intensive. Again, things like uh, painting. There's one warning though that when you do turn this up to advanced, you might introduce some artifacts on the screen. Remember, a lot of this is just a guideline for you. You need to go back and change these settings yourself and watch what's happening in Photoshop. If you made a setting change and it's not perfect, well, go back and change it back. So I'm just going to leave mine at normal. So there's another really important indicator while you're working in Photoshop to look at. I'm going to click OK and show you down here at the bottom of my screen, this little flyout menu up here, we can use efficiency. So when I click on efficiency, you'll see that this changes to a percentage. And you can leave this on all the time. By default, Photoshop shows you the document size. What efficiency is doing is it's looking at the amount of RAM you're using. Right now it's at 100%. I'm not really doing anything other than opening up this image. If you see it falling below 95%, that's when you need to go in and make some changes. Anything below 95% is warning you that Photoshop is becoming inefficient. And you know what, if you're just working with small web images and, and things of that sort, even you know digital camera images, you're probably not going to see that go down too much. But if you're doing some really intensive work with tons of layers and big files, you might see that start to drop down below 95. And that's where you've got to go in and make a change to those settings. So those are some settings that we think are really important for you to understand in Photoshop. They're going to help you get the most performance out of your application and get your artwork done quickly.